it's Chris here from the camera store again and here's the thing I'm shooting so many videos that uh, my family doesn't really remember what I look like anymore and at the same time the new Sony VG20 came out and I have to shoot a video on this so I brought my family along with me today I'm gonna try and do a video and family day at the same time hardest video yet but I want to talk to you guys about this new camera you know the Sony VG20 which has just come out now a couple years ago we shot a video about the Sony VG10 and it was actually one of our first videos and the VG10 was revolutionary because it was really the first camera that took an SLR sized chip and put it into a purpose built video camera and in that video we talked about how that was going to be the wave of the future and it really it really was I mean we were right because now we've got cameras like the Panasonic AF100 the Sony FS100 the new VG20 and of course SLRs have just flourished in this video market as well so what have they changed here with the VG20? How is this going to be different for you folks at home shooting into your shooting lifestyle? Well, let's take it through the paces, take a look, and hopefully I won't neglect my family too much at the same time. Let's check it out. Now what have they really changed on the Sony VG20 from the VG10? I mean, on the outside it looks very, very similar, but we have a few control dial changes here, and they have added a start-stop button up here, as well as an expanded focus button. Now that gives us a second place to start and record our movies, but it's kind of in a funny place. I guess you'd have to use your pinky finger to manipulate it here. I don't know, it's a weird, odd placement. I also notice here we've got on the controls, shutter speed and iris. Yeah, that's, that's great, honey. We've got uh, shutter speed and iris buttons here, which let us manipulate our controls, but still no gain control button, which is kind of disappointing. You have to do it through the control wheel, and that ties that up. Now. We also have a very exciting new development here, which is the LA EA2 adapter. Now, this is an alpha lens adapter letting us put Sony alpha lenses on with very quick phase detect autofocus. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like in just a bit. Same great microphone. It's a quad system that gives us 5.1. Yeah, that's beautiful, honey. 5.1 system, so we get that nice audio, and it's really a beautiful mic. It even follows the focal length of your lens so it knows where to guide its sound. Otherwise though, reminiscent to the VG10, looks like the same EVF, feels very, very similar. Let's see what that phase detect is like. Now with the Sony LA-EA2 adapter, you can put on all the Sony Alpha Glass, and it does give you this new phase detect autofocus capability as well, which promises to be faster than even the standard focusing that you get with NEX lenses. So I'm gonna do a video here, we're gonna try the phase detection as I move around with this size lens, we should see some pretty snappy autofocus. Now, it's nice and quick, it certainly does respond. It does tend to jump. I mean, one thing I'm gonna say about the autofocusing here on this camera when you're using the phase detect is it's not as smooth as the NEX focusing. Things go really quick, they jump right to the scene. Whereas with an NEX lens, you're gonna get a much nicer, smoother autofocus, albeit slower response time. Still, all in all, a nice option. And if you're a Sony Alpha user, if you've got the, the Alpha series of SLRs and you got a lot of lenses around, this can be a great way to get that quick focusing capability on your NEX VG20 as well. Now the VG10 did leave a lot to be desired when it came to a film camera. And the VG20's tried to address a lot of the shortcomings of that camera. For example, by adding things like a manual focus assist with the expanded focus and peaking, which is also really nice to get that precise focus. Audio levels were a big problem too. The VG10 didn't have any control of audio levels. The VG20 does give you audio level control. I think they could have implemented it better because it uses the touch screen, but it works. It's better than nothing. They've also expanded their frame rates to give videographers some more control. 24 frame per second, 30 frame per second, and 60 frame per second are options as well. Meg, you doing okay? You cold? She'll be fine. She'll be fine. And they've also expanded their codec. We're now using the ABC HD 2.0 codec, which means you get 28 meg per second data rate, handles speed and action a little bit nicer. I do wish still that they had that gain control there. Videographers are going to miss that, but it is a good step in the right direction to make this more of a creative camera. The Sony VG20 is a little schizophrenic when it comes to being a camera because it doesn't know whether it's a video camera or a stills camera, and it's always advertised itself as a hybrid to do both. You got that great 60 megapixel sensor. I love you too, honey. It's got that great 60 megapixel sensor you'd find in the Sony NEX5N, and so it takes better stills than any dedicated video camera. But the handling of this camera is not conducive to shooting stills. That sounds nice, buy whatever you want, baby. And as a video camera, well, it's getting some good steps in the right direction. The audio levels are good. I mean, I like that. I like the new focusing assist, but at the same time, where are the XLR ports on a camera that's this expensive? You know? I think it's gonna turn off high-end filmmakers who are looking for a compact but powerful camera. So, you know, all in all, 
we'll take a look, see how this camera handles some quality of the video, because that's really what these cameras are about, and see if that's you know worth redeeming all the features we have on this camera. All right, folks, so that was an unexpectedly long walk, but we're back here now. And, uh, you know, the VG20, we got to play with it today. And, you know, there's stuff I do like about it. I mean, the audio uh, on the mic is fantastic. That, that four-set microphone does a great job. XLR ports, yeah, I guess it'd be nice to have on a camera like this. But, you know what, it's not a pro-pro camera. I understand why they didn't put it on there. As far as uh, overall handling, the camera's great. I mean, you got a nice handle on top. It's a very small camera considering the chip size that's in there. Uh, it does handle more like a video camera. And they put those nice features in there, like the manual focus assist and the peaking. That was a move in the right direction. Um, I would have liked to see an ND filter in there. That would have been nice, you know, built-in NDs. Otherwise, you have to use fader NDs on the outside. We do that with SLRs. I know it's not the end of the world, but it would be a nice touch if they could include that. More cameras should have that in general. The sensor's great. I mean, that 60 megapixel sensor does a fantastic job. And remember, the camera does give you the side benefit of being an excellent still camera. You can do beautiful photos. It takes great photos in low light. The handling's not ideal for shooting stills, though, but in a pinch, you can do it funny though that they left out a lot of the image styles and color choices that you would have on say an NEX5N you know it's basically just a still camera with aperture shutter speed and ISO control so basic but functional you know I wasn't too enthused about that adapter and you know it sounds great in practice put alpha lenses on your camera you know get the phase detect autofocus which certainly is quick but you know the NEX lenses focus just fine pretty quick on the camera too and that adapter costs you some big penalties first off for some reason, you cannot change the aperture off of 3.5. Now, that's real limiting because you can't take advantage of those beautiful Zeiss lenses with their fast apertures. You can't close down for depth of field either. The other thing, of course, is you are shooting through a translucent mirror just like you have in your alpha camera, so you're losing light there as well. That seems like a strange thing. Uh, you know, maybe we need it because NEX glass as it is now is kind of short in the department of having a lot of choices. So, you know, they're going to change that. They're going to come up with new lenses. I would probably personally just stick with the NEX glass. Still, you know, overall the camera does handle well. It does shoot well. Uh, it's maybe not made for, for full-on cinematographers. I think this is still aimed at people who want to have an easy, convenient video camera, but that does really high-end results and shoots a little bit more easily for video than, say, an SLR would, like a Rebel or something like that. You know, at the end of the day, though, all you can really judge these cameras on is, you know, what's the video quality like? So, you know, why don't we take a test? We'll get the camera ready, and we'll just shoot some video and see how that handles it. So... Come check out our NEX video here and uh, see what you think. Don't ignore me. I'm so sorry. Oh, hi, Noah. Uh, you guys too.